Section 1 of Robert Burns' 250th Anniversary, Volume 1. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Alessandro Gagliardi. Ode by Robert Tannehill. Once on a time, Almighty Jove invited all the minor gods above to spend one day in social festive pleasure. His regal robes were laid aside, his crown, his scepter, and his pride, and winged with joy the hours did fly, the happiest ever time did measure. Of love and social harmony they sung, till heaven's high golden arches echoing rung, and as they quaffed the nectar flowing can, their toast was universal peace twixt man and man. Their godship sighs beamed gladness with the wish, and Mars half-reddened with a guilty blush. Jove swore he'd hurl each rascal to perdition, who dared to face his works with wild ambition, but poured encomiums on each patriot band, who, hating conquest, guard their native land. Loud thundering plaudits shook the bright abodes, till Mercury, solemn-voiced, assailed their ears, informing that a stranger, all in tears, Weeping implored an audience of the gods. Jove, ever prone to succor the distressed, A swell redressive glowed within his breast. He pitied much the stranger's sad condition, And ordered his immediate admission. The stranger entered, bowed respect to all. Respectful silence reigned throughout the hall. His checkered robes excited their surprise, Richly transversed with various glowing dyes. A target on his strong left arm he bore, broad as the shield the mighty Fingal wore. The glowing landscape on its center shined, and massy thistles round the borders twined. His brows were bound with yellow-blossomed broom, green birch and roses blending in perfume. His eyes beamed honor, though all red with grief, and thus heaven's king spake comfort to the chief. My son, let speech unfold thy cause of woe. Say, why does melancholy cloud thy brow? Tis mine the wrongs of virtue to redress. Speak, for tis mine to succor deep distress. Then thus he spake, O king, by thy command, I am the guardian of that far-famed land, named Caledonia, great in art and arms, and every worth that social fondness charms with every virtue that the heart approve, warm in their friendships, rapturous in their loves, profusely generous, obstinately just, inflexible as death their vows of trust, for independence fires their noble minds, scorning deceit as gods do scorn the fiends. But what avail the virtues of the north? No patriot bard to celebrate their worth, no heaven-taught minstrel with the voice of song, to him their deeds and make their names live long. And ah, should luxury with soft winning wiles spread her contagion o'er my subject isles, my hardy sons, no longer valor's boast, would sink despised their wonted greatness lost. Forgive my wish, O king, I speak with awe. Thy will is fate, thy word is sovereign law. O wouldst thou deign thy suppliant to regard? and grant my country one true patriot bard. My sons would glory in thy blessing given, and virtuous deeds spring from the gift of heaven. To which the god, my son, cease to deplore, thy name in song shall sound the world all o'er. Thy bard shall rise full fraught with all the fire that heaven and freeborn nature can inspire. Ye sacred nine, your golden harps prepare, to instruct the favorite of my special care, that whether the song be raised to war or love, his soul-winged strains may equal those above. Now faithful to thy trust, from sorrow free, go wait the issue of our high decree. Speechless, the genius stood, in glad surprise, adoring gratitude beamed in his eyes. The promised bard, his soul with transport fills, and light with joy, he sought his native hills. T'was in regard of Wallace and his worth, Jove honored Coila with his birth. And on that morn, when Burns was born, 
Each muse with joy did hail the boy, and fame on tiptoe fain would blow her horn, but fate forbade the blast, too premature, till worth should sanction it beyond the critic's power. His merits proven, fame her blast hath blown, now Scotia's bard o'er all the world is known, but trembling doubts here check my unpolished lays, what can they add to a whole world's praise? Yet, while revolving time this day returns, let Scotchmen glory in the name of Burns. End of Ode to Burns by Robert Tannehill Recording by Alessandro Galliardi, Brooklyn, New York Section 2 of Robert Burns' 250th Anniversary, Volume 1 this is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Alan Winteroud. Robert Burns by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. I see amid the fields of air a plowman, who in foul and fair sings at his task so clear, we know not if it is the Laverock song we hear or his, nor care to ask. For him the ploughing of those fields a more ethereal harvest yields than sheaves of grain. Songs flush with purple bloom the rye, the plover's call, the curlew's cry, sing in his brain. Touched by his hand the wayside weed becomes a flower. The lowliest reed beside the stream is clothed with beauty. Gorse and grass and heather, where his footsteps pass, the brighter seem. He sings of love, whose flame illumes the darkness of lone cottage rooms. He feels the force, the treacherous undertow and stress of wayward passions, and no less the keen remorse. At moments, wrestling with his fate, his voice is harsh, but not with hate. The brushwood hung above the tavern door lets fall its bitter leaf, its drop of gall upon his tongue. But still the music of his song rises o'er all elate and strong. Its master chords are manhood, freedom, brotherhood. Its discords but an interlude between the words. And then to die so young and leave unfinished what he might achieve. Yet better sure is this than wandering up and down, An old man in a country town, infirm and poor. For now he haunts his native land as an immortal youth. His hand guides every plow. He sits beside each ingle nook. His voice is in each rushing brook, each rustling bough. His presence haunts this room tonight, a form of mingled mist and light from that far coast. Welcome beneath this roof of mine, welcome. This vacant chair is thine, dear guest and ghost. End of Robert Burns. Recording by Alan Winteroud. Boom Coach dot blogspot dot com end of robert burns by henry wadsworth longfellow section three of robert burns two hundred and fiftieth anniversary volume one this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org Recording by Philippa Robert Burns by William Topaz McGonagall Immortal Robert Burns of air, There's but few poets can with you compare. Some of your poems and songs are very fine. To Mary in heaven is most sublime. And then again in your Cotter's Saturday night, Your genius there does shine most bright, As pure as the dewdrops of the night. Your Tam O'Shanter is very fine, both funny, racy, and divine. From John O'Groats to Dumfries, all critics consider it to be a masterpiece. And also, you have said the same, therefore they are not to blame. And in my own opinion, both you and they are right, for your genius there does sparkle bright, which I most solemnly declare to thee, immortal bard of air. Your banks and braes of bonny doon is sweet and melodious in its tune, 
and the poetry is moral and sublime, and in my opinion nothing can be more fine. Your Scots were here with Wallace bled, is most beautiful to hear sung or read, for your genius there does shine as bright, like unto the stars of night. Immortal bard of air, I must conclude my muse, to speak in praise of thee, does not refuse. For you were a mighty poet, few could with you compare, and also an honour to Scotland, for your genius it is rare. End of Robert Burns Lachany Gar by George Gordon Lord Byron This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please go to LibriVox.org. This recording by Patty Brugman. Lachany Gar by George Gordon Lord Byron from Hours of Idleness, 1807 Away, ye gay landscapes, ye gardens of roses, and you let the minions of luxury rove. Restore me the rocks where the snowflake reposes, though still they are sacred to freedom and love. Yet Caledonia, beloved, are thy mountains. Round their white summits the elements war, though cataracts foam instead of smooth flowing fountains. I sigh for the valley of dark Loch Nagar. Ah, there my young footsteps in infancy wandered. My cap was the bonnet, my cloak was the plaid. On chieftains long perished my memory pondered, as daily I strode through the pine-covered glade. I sat not my home till the day's dying glory gave place to the rays of the bright polar star. For fancy was cheered by traditional story, disclosed by the natives of dark Lachnagar. Shades of the dead, have I not heard your voices? Rise on the night-rolling breath of the gale. Surely the soul of the hero rejoices, And rides on the wind o'er his own highland vale. Round Lachnagar, what the stormy mist gathers, Winter presides in his cold icy car. Clouds there encircle the forms of my fathers. They dwell in the tempest of dark Loch Nagar. Ill-starred, though brave, did no visions foreboden. Tell you that fate had forsaken your cause? Ah, were you destined to die at Culloden, Victory crowned, not your fall with applause. Still were you happy in death's earthly slumber. You rest with your clan in the caves of Lemar. The pibroch resounds to the piper's loud number, your deeds on the echoes of dark Loch Nagar. Years have rolled on Loch Nagar since I left you. Years must elapse ere I tread you again. Nature of verdure and flowers has bereft you, yet still you are dearer than Albion's plain. England, thy beauties are tame and domestic. To one who has rode o'er the mountains afar, Oh, for the crags that are wild and majestic, The steep, frowning glories of dark Loch Nagar. End of Loch Nagar Read by Paddy Brugman The Haggis of Private McPhee by Robert W. Service. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please go to LibriVox.org. This recording by Patty Brugman. The Haggis of Private McPhee by Robert W. Service. Ha ye heard what me old mother's posted to me? It fair makes me homesick, said Private McPhee. 
and what did she send says private mcfun as he cocked his rifle and bleezed at a hun a haggis a haggis says private mcphee the broadest big haggis i ever did see and think it's the morn when fond memory turns to haggis and whiskey the birthday o burns we mun find a drum and then we'll cut in the rest o oh, the lads and we'll have burns nicked with the best be ready at sundoon snapped sergeant mccall i want you two men for the listening patrol then private mcphee looked at private mcfun i'm thinking my lad we're confoundedly done then private mcfun looked at private mcphee i'm thinking old chap it's a off wit or spree but up spoke the crony wee woolly mcnar just lee your bra huggers for me to prepare and as for the dram if i search the camp round ye may ha drop it to just hand it doon say rin lads and think the nicked it be black or the haggis that's waiting ye when ye get back my but it was waesome in nobody's land and the dead they were rotten on every hand and the rockets like corpse candles hunted the sky and the winds of destruction went shuddering by there was scalping o bullets and skirling o shells and breegin o bombs and thousand death knells but corian doan in a jack johnson hole little fashed the twa men o the listening patrol for sweeter than honey and bricked as a gem wist the thought o the haggis that waited for them yet alas in our moments of sunniest cheer calamities often mist coolly near and while the twa talked o their puddin divine the books below them were hawkin a mine and while the twa cracked o the feast they would have the fuse it was burnin and burnin away then sudden a roar like a thunder o doom a hell leap o flame then the weest o the tomb ha jock o your hurt says private mcfun eh gordy they've got me i'm fearin i'm done it's my leg i'm just thinkin it's off at the knee your best gang and leave me says private mcfee i'll leave ya i wanna said private mcfun and leave ya canna for though i am nicked run it's no far i would gang it's no muckle i see i'm blind that's what's the matter with me then private mcfee sadly shook at his head if we bed here for long we be bidden for dead and yet gordy lad i could gang well content if i tasted that haggis my old mother sent that's droll says mcfun you've just speck at my mind oh i ken it's a terrible thing to be blind and yet it's no that that embitters my lot it's missing that braw buckle haggis you've got for a while they were silent then up once again spoke private mcfee though he whistled with pain and why should we miss it between you and me we've got legs for to run we've got eyes for to see you lend me your shanks and i'll lend you my sicht and we'll baith have a cookful o haggis the nicht oh the sky it was door like and dreepin a wee when private mcfun gripped private mcfee o oh, the glart was flyin and the creation the grun when private mcfee guided private mcfun keep clear them corpses there may be no dead Hold on, there's a big muckle crater ahead. Look out, there's a sap will be high in a coop. A store shell, for God's sake, don't lad on your dope. Bear off to your richt. Ah, you're just done fine. Before the next finished, a haggis will dine. 
There was death and destruction on every hand. There was havoc and horror in nobody's land. And the shells bickered down with a grump and a glare, and the hamless wee bullets were ding in the air. Yet on they went staggering, cooring down, when the sutter and cluck or the maxim crept round. And the legs of McFun, they were sturdy and stout, and McPhee on his back kept a bonny lookout. On, on, my brave lad, we're no fair for the gaul. I can hear the pro swearing of Sergeant McCall. But strength has its limit, and Private McFun, with a sab and a curse, fell his length on the grun. Then Private McPhee shut it down in his ear. Just think of a haggis, I smell it from here. It's gushing with juice, it's embalming the air. It's steaming for us, and we just about there. Then Private McFun answers, Domit, old club, for the sake of the haggis, I'll gang till I drop. And he gets on his feet with a heave and a strain, and onward he staggers in passion and pain. And the flare and the glare, the fury increase, till you'd think they'd just taken a hail on a leash. And on they go reeling, in pitiful plight, and someone is shouting away on the right, and someone is running, and no oh, they can hear. A sound like a prayer and a sound like a cheer, and swift to the crash and the flash and the din, the lads or the heelands are pouring in them in. They're both sourly wounded, but it is no droll. Who oh, they rave about Haggis, says Sergeant McCall. When herplin along comes we woolly McNair, and they are warned why he was greeting Sassar. He says, I just lifted it out of the pot, and there it laid steaming and savory hot. When sudden I duked at a flesh of the shell, and it dropped on the haggis and dinged it to hell. And oh, but the lads were for taking aback, when sudden the order was passed to attack. And up from the trenches like lions they leapt, and on through the nick like a torn they were swept. On, on with their bayonets thirsting before, on, on to the foe, with a rush and a roar. And while to the welkin their battle cry rang, and doon the butchers like tigers they sprang. And there wasn't a man but had death in his ee. For he thought of the haggis of Private McPhee. End of the haggis of Private McPhee. Section 6 of Robert Burns 250th Anniversary, Volume 1. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording from Andy, from Inverarnon, Scotland. Address to a Haggis by Robert Burns. Fair for ye honest sonsy face, Great chieftain of the Padden Reese, Aboon them all ye tack your place, Paint, tripe, or therm, Weel are ye worthy of a grace, As lang's my arm. The groaning trencher there ye fill, Your hurdies like a distant hill, Your pen would help to mend a mill In time of need, While through your pores the dews distill Like amber bead. His knife, see rustic labour dicht, and cut you up with ready slicht, trenching your gushing entrails bricht, like on a ditch. And then, oh, what a glorious sicht, warm, reeking, rich. Then, horn for horn, they stretch and strive, deal take the handmost on they drive. Till all their wheel-swelled kites belive are bent like drums. 
Then all good man must like to arrive, but thank it hums. Is there that o'er his French ragout, or rollio that would store a so, or fricassee would make her spew with perfect sconner, looks down with sneering, scornful view on sick a dinner? Poor devil! See him o'er his trash, as feckless as a withered rash, his spindle shank, a good whiplash, his neve a knit. Throw bloody flood or field to dash, oh, how unfit. But mark the rustic haggis fade, the trembling earth resounds his tread, clap in his woolly neve a bled, he'll make it whistle. And legs and arms and heeds will sned like taps a thristle. Ye poors who make mankind your care, and dish them out your bill of fare. All Scotland wants nae skinking wear that chops and luggies. But if ye wish her grateful prayer, gie her a haggis. End of Address to a Haggis. Recording from Andy in Vernon, Scotland. M A L Y S dot W S. There was a lad was born in Kyle by Robert Burns. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please go to LibriVox.org. This recording by Patty Brugman. There was a lad was born in Kyle by Robert Burns, 1785. There was a lad was born in Kyle, but one a day and one a style. I doubt it's hardly worth the while to be so nice with Robin. Robin was a roving boy, rantin', roving, rantin', roving. Robin was a roving boy, rantin', roving, Robin. Our monarch's hindmost year, but any, was five and twenty days begun. Was then a blast or January wind blew Hansel in on Robin. Robin was a roving boy, rantin, roven, rantin, roven. Robin was a roving boy, rantin, roven, robin. The gossiped keeket in his loof, qua show what lives, will see the proof. This wily boy will be in a coof. I think we'll call him Robin. Robin was a roving boy. Rantin, roven, rantin, roven. Robin was a roven boy, rantin, roven, robin. He'll hae misfortunes great and small, but ay a heart aboon them all. He'll be a credit to us all, will be a proud robin. Robin was a roven boy, rantin, roven, rantin, roven. Robin was a roven boy, rantin, roven, robin. But yours three times three make nine, I see by ilka score and line, this chap will dearly like our kin, so leaves me on the robin. Robin was a roving boy, rantin, roven, rantin, roven. Robin was a roving boy, rantin, roven, robin. Good faith, Quosho, I doubt you stir, ye gar the lasses lie as far. But twenty thoughts ye may hae war, so blessings on the robin. Robin was a roving boy, rantin, roven, rantin, roven. Robin was a roving boy, rantin, roven, robin. End of There Was a Lad Born in Kyle. The Cotter's Saturday Night by Robert Burns. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please go to LibriVox.org. This recording by Patty Brugman. The Cotter's Saturday Night by Robert Burns. Inscribed to R. Aiken, ESQ. Let not ambition mock their useful toil, their homely joys, and destiny obscure nor grander here with a disdainful smile.
the short and simple annals of the poor. Gray. My loved and honoured much respected friend, no mercenary bard, his homage pays. With honest pride I scorn each selfish end. My dearest meed of friends esteem and praise, to you I sing in simple Scottish lays. The lowly train in life's sequestered scene, the native feeling strong, the guileless ways, what Aiken in a cottage would have been. Ah, though he is worth unknown, far happier there, I win. November chill blows loud with angry sue, the shortened winter day is near close, the miry beasts retreat and fry the play, the blackening trains across to their repose, the toil-worn cotter for his labour goes. This night his weekly moil is at an end, collects his spades, his mattocks and his hose, hope in the morn and ease and the rest to spend, and weary o'er the more his course does homeward bend. At length his lonely cot appears in view beneath the shelter of an aged tree, the expectant wee things tottle and sutter through to meet their dad with flitter and noise and glee. His wee bit ingle blinking bonnily, his clean hearth stein, his thrifty wifey smile, his lispin infants prattling on his knee. Does ah his weary carlk and carols beguile, and makes him quite forget his labours and his toil. Belly the elder, barns come draping in, at service out among the farmers round, some kay the plough, some herd, some tentier in, a caney errand to a neighbour town. Their eldest hope, their jenny, woman grown, in youthful bloom love sparkling in her eye, comes home, perhaps, to show a brand new gown, or deposit her sour worn penny free to help her parents dear if they in hardship be. With joy unfeigned brothers and sisters meet, and each father's welfare kindly spears. The social hours, swift-winged, unnoticed fleet, each tells the uncles that he sees or hears, the parents' partial eye their hopeful years, anticipation forward points the view. The mother, with her needle and her shears, Gar's old class look amongst as wheels the new. The father mixes with all admonition do. Their masters and their mistresses command the yonkers ah are warned to obey, and mind their labours with an ardent hand, and ne'er though out of sight to do jock or play, and oh be sure to fear the Lord our ways, and mind your duty duly morn and night lest temptation's path ye gang astray, implore his counsel and assisting might, they never sought in vain, that sought the Lord aright. But hark, a rap comes gently to the door, Jenny wakens the meaning o' oh, the same, tis how a neighbour lad came o'er the moor to do some errands and convey her home. The wily mother sees the conscious flame sparkle in Jenny's eye and flush her cheeks. With heart-struck, anxious care, inquires his name. Well, Jenny Hoflins is afraid to speak. Real pleased the mother hears. It's nae wild, worthless rake. With kindly welcome, Jenny brings him Ben. A strap and youth, he takes the mother's eye. Blythe Jenny sees the visits no ill tain, the father cracks of horses, plows and kai. The youngster's artless heart o'erflows with joy, but blate the lathful, scarce can wheel behave. The mother with a woman's wiles can spy, what makes the youth so bashful and so grave? Wheel pleased to think her barns respected, like the lave. O oh, happy love, where love like this is found, O oh, heartfelt raptures, bliss beyond compare, I've paced much this weary mortal round, And sage experience bids me this declare, If heaven a drought of heavenly pleasure spare, One cordial in this melancholy veil, Tis when a youthful, loving, modest pair In other's arms breathe out the tender tale, Beneath the milk-white thorn that scents the evening gale. 
is there in human form that bears a heart a wretch a villain lost to love and truth that can with studied sly and snaring art betray switch and his unsuspecting youth curse on his perjured art dissembling smooth are honour virtue conscience all exiled is there no pity no relenting ruth points to the parents fondling o'er their child then paints the ruined maid and their distraction wild but now the supper crowns their simple board the healsome patriarch chief of scotia's food the soup their only hockey does afford that yont the highland snugly chows her cood the dame brings forth in complimental mood to grace the lad her wheel hind kibok fell and aft his breast and aft his cassets good the frugal wife garrulous will tell how twas a talmud old st lint was in the bell the cheerful supper done with serious face they round the ingle form a circle weed and sire turns o'er with patriarchal grace the big a bible on his father's pride his bonnet reverently is laid aside his lyre half swear and thin and bare those strains that once did sweet in zion kept glide he wails a portion with judicious care and let us worship god he says with solemn air they chant their artless notes in simple guise they tune their hearts by far the noblest aim perhaps dundee's wild warbling measures rise or plaintive martyrs worthy of the name or noble elgin beats the heavenward flame the sweetest far of scotia's holy lays compared with the italian trills are tame the trickled ear no heartfelt raptures raise nay unison hey they with our creator's praise the priest-like father reads the sacred page how abraham was the friend of god on high or moses bade eternal warfare wage with amnek's ungracious progeny or how the royal bard did groaning lie beneath the stroke of heaven's avenging hour or job's pathetic plaint the wailing cry or rapt isaiah's wild seraphic fire or other holy seers that tune the sacred lyre perhaps the christian volume is the theme how guiltless blood for guilty man was shed how he who bore in heaven the second name had not on earth whereon to lay his head how his first followers and servants sped how precepts sage they wrote to many a land how he who lone in patmos banished saw in the sun a mighty angel stand and heard great babylon's doom pronounced by heaven's command then kneeling down to heaven's eternal king the saint the father and the husband prays hope springs exulting on triumphant wings that thus they all shall meet in future days there ever bask in uncreated rays no more to sigh or shed the bitter tear together hymning their creator's praise in such society yet still more dear while circling time moves round in an eternal sphere compared with this how poor religion's pride in all the pomp of method and of art when men display to congregations wide devotions every grace except the heart the power and sense the pageant will desert the pompous strain the sacerdotal stole but haply in some cottage far apart may hear well pleased the language of the soul and of his book of life the inmates poor enroll then homeward i'll take off their several way and youngling cottagers retire to rest the parent pair their secret homage pay then proffer up to heaven the warm request that he who stills the raven's clamorous nest and decks the lily fair in flowery pride 
would in the way his wisdom seize the best. For them and for their little ones provide, but chiefly in their hearts with grace divine preside. From scenes like these old Scotia's grander springs, that makes her loved at home revered abroad, princes and lords are but the breath of kings, an honest man's the noblest work of God, and certs in fair virtues heavenly road. The cottage leaves the palace far behind. What is a lording's pomp, a cumbrous load, disguising oft the wretch of humankind, studied in the arts of hell, in wickedness refined? O oh, Scotia, my dear, my native soil, for whom my warmest wish to heaven is sent, long may thy hearty sons of rustic toil be blessed with health and peace and sweet content. And, oh, may heaven their simplest lives prevent from luxury's contagion weak and vile, than however crowns and coronets be rent, a virtuous populace may rise the while, and stand a wall of fire round their much-loved isle. O thou who poured the patriotic tide that steamed through Wallace's undaunted heart, who dared to nobly stem tyrannic prayed, or nobly die the second glorious part, the patriot's God particularly thou art, his friend inspire guardian and reward, O never, never scot his realm desert, but still the patriot and the patriot bard in bright succession raise her ornament and guard. End of the Cotter's Saturday Night Read by Patty Bruckman To a Mountain Daisy by Robert Burns this is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please go to LibriVox.org. This recording by Patty Brugman. To a Mountain Daisy by Robert Burns We modest crimson-tipped flower, Thou's met me in an evil hour, For I mon crush among the store, Thy slender stem, to spare thee now, Is past my power. Thou bonny gem. Alas, it's no thy neighbor sweet, The bonny lark companion meet, Bending thee among the dewy wheat, With speckled breast, When upward singing blithe To greet the purpling east. Cold blue, the bitter biting north Upon thy early humble birth, Yet cheerfully thou glinted forth Amid the storm, Scarce reared above the parent earth thy tender form. The flaunting flowers our garden seal, High sheltering woods and was moan shield, But thou beneath the random bleed, O clod or sten, adorns the hissel stibble field, Unseen alone. There in thy scanty mantle clad, Thy snowy bosom sunward spread, Thou lifts thy unassuming head In humble guise, But now the share uptears thy bed, And lo thou lies. Such is the fate of artless maid, Sweet flowered, of the rural shade, By love's simplicity betrayed, And guileless trust, Till she like thee all solid is laid, low in the dust. Such is the fate of simple bard, On life's rough ocean luckless starred, Unskilful he to note the card Of prudent lore, Till billows rage and gales blow hard, And whelm him o'er. Such fate to a suffering worth is given, who long with wants and woes has striven, by human pride or cunning driven, to misery's brink, till wretched of every stay but heaven. 
he ruined sink. Even thou who mournst the daisy's fate, that fate is thine, no distant date. Stern ruin's ploughshare drives elate, full on thy bloom, till crushed beneath the furrow's weight shall be thy doom. End of To a Mountain Daisy by Robert Burns Read by Patty Brugman Section 10 of Robert Burns' 250th Anniversary, Volume 1 This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org Recording by Peter Bloomfield Epistle to a Young Friend by Robert Burns A lang he thought, my youthful friend, a something to have sent ye, though it should serve ne either end than just a kind memento. But how the subject theme may gang, let time and chance determine, perhaps it may turn it a sang, perhaps turn it a sermon. You'll try the world soon, my lad, and, Andrew, dear, believe me, you'll find mankind an uncou squad, and muckle they may grieve ye, for care and trouble set your thought, even when your end's attained, and all your views may come to naught, where every nerve is strained. I'll no say men are villains are, the real hard and wicked, wha hae nae check but human law, are to a few restrict it. But, och, mankind are unco weak, and little to be trusted, if self the wavering balance shake, it's really right adjust it. Yet they were fall in fortune's strife, their fate we should na censure, for still the important end o' life they equally may answer. A man may hae an honest heart, though poor to thoroughly stare him. A man may tak a neighbour's pert, yet hae nae cash to spare him. I free af han your story tell when we a bosom crony, but still keep something to yoursel ye you scarcely tell to ony. Conceal yourself as weel's ye can, for a critical dissection, but keep through every other man with sharp and sly inspection. The sacred law will placed love, luxuriantly indulge it, but never tempt the illicit rove, though nothing should divulge it. I wave the quantum o' the sin, the hazard o' concealing, but oh, it hardens all within and petrifies the feeling. To catch Dame Fortune's golden smile, assiduous wait upon her, and gather gear by every while that's justified by honour. Not for to hide it in a hedge, nor for a train attendant, but for the glorious privilege of being independent. The fear o' hell's a hangman's whip to hold the wretch in order, but where ye feel your honour grip, let that I be your border. Slightest touch is instant pause, debar our side pretences, and resolutely keep its laws, and care in consequences. The great creator, to revere, must sure become the creature, but still the preaching can't forbear, and even the rigid feature, yet ne'er will wits profane to range, be complacence extended, and atheist laughs a poor exchange, for deity offend it. When ranting round in pleasures ring, religion may be blinded. Or if she gie a random sting, it may be little minded. But when on life were tempest driven, a conscience but a canker, a correspondence fixedly heaven, is sure a noble anchor. Adieu, dear amiable youth, your heart can ne'er be wanting. May prudence, fortitude, and truth erect your brow and daunting. In ploughman phrase, God send ye speed, still daily to grow wiser, and may ye better wreck the reed than e'er did the adviser. End of Epistle to a Young Friend Recording by Peter Bloomfield from Paisley, Scotland Robert Burns 250th Anniversary, Volume 1 Holy Willie's Prayer This is a LibriVox recording. 
All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Charles MacDonald. Holy Willie's Prayer by Robert Burns. O thou that in the heavens does dwell, O oh, as it pleases best thy cell, Sends yin to heaven and ten to hell, All for thy glory, And no for any good or ill They've done before thee. I bless and praise thy matchless might, When thousands thou hast left in night, That I am here before thy sight, For gifts and grace, A burning and a shining light To all this place. What was I, or my generation, That I should get sick exultation? I, who had deserved most just damnation For broken laws, Six thousand years ere my creation, Through Adam's cause. When from my mother's womb I fell, Thou might he plunged me deep in hell, To gnash my gums and weep and wail In burning lakes, Where damned devils roar and yell, Chained to their stakes. Yet I am here a chosen sample To show thy grace is great and ample. I'm here a pillar of thy temple, Strong as a rock, A guide, a buckler and example To all thy flock. But yet, O oh Lord, confess I must, At times I'm fashed with fleshy lust, And sometimes too in worldly trust Vile self gets in, but thou remembers we are dust, defiled we sin. O Lord, yestreen thou kens we meg, thy pardon I sincerely beg. O may it ne'er be a living plague to my dishonour, and I'll ne'er lift a lawless leg again upon her. Besides, I further mourn a thou, will ease his lass three times a trow. But, Lord, that Friday I was foo when I come near her, or else thou kens thy servant true would never steer her. Maybe thou lets this fleshy thorn buffet thy servant e'en and morn, lest he our proud or high should turn that he sae gifted. If say, thy hand mon e'en be born until thou lift it. Lord, Bless thy chosen in this place, For here thou hast a chosen race. But God, confound their stubborn face And blast their name, O bring thy elders to disgrace and open shame. Lord, mind gone Hamilton's deserts, He drinks and swears and plays at curts, Yet has so many taken airts with great and small, Frae God's ain priest the people's hearts he steals a war. And when we chasten him, therefore, Thou kens how he bred sick a splore, And set the world in a roar o' laughing at us. Curse thou his basket and his store, Kale and potatoes. Lord, hear my earnest cry and prayer Against that presbytery o' air. Thy strong right hand, Lord, mak it bare upon their heads. Lord, visit them, and dinna spare for their misdeeds. O Lord, my God, that glib-tongued aching, My very heart and flesh are quaking to think How we stood sweetin', shaken, and pished with dread, While he, with hanging lip and snakin, held up his heed. Lord, in thy day of vengeance try him. Lord, visit them who did employ him, And pass not in thy mercy by them, Nor hear their prayer, But for thy people's sake destroy them, And dinna spare. But, Lord, remember me and mine, It were mercies temporal and divine, That I, for grace and gear may shine, excelled by name, and, and all the glory shall be thine. Amen. Amen. Epitaph on Holy Willie Here Holy Willie's sair worn clay tacks up its last abode. His soul has ta'en some other way, I fear the left-hand road. Stop. There he is, as sure as a gun, poor silly buddy, see him. 
Nay wonder he's as black's the grun, Observe who is standing wi him. Your brunstain devilship, I see, Has got him there before ye, But hod your nine-tailed cat a wee, Till yence you've heard my story. Your pity I will not implore, For pity ye have nain. Justice, alas, has gain him o'er, And mercy's day is gain. But hear me, sir, deal as ye are, Look something to your credit. A kiff like him would stain your name, If it were kent ye did it. End of Holy Willie's Prayer Recording by Charles MacDonald, Edinburgh, Scotland Email charles.macdonald at virgin.net MacDonald starts M-A-C Robert Burns' 250th Anniversary, Volume 1 Address to the Unca Gid This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org Recording by Charles MacDonald Address to the Unca Gid or the Rigidly Righteous O ye who are say Gid yourself, say pious and say holy, You've not to do but mark and tell your neighbour's thoughts and folly. Whose life is like a wheel gone mill, supplied with store of water, the heap at happers ebbing still, and still the clap plays clatter. Hear me, ye venerable core, as counsel for poor mortals, that frequent pass douce wisdom's door for glacate folly's portals. I, for their thoughtless, careless sakes, would here propone defences, their dauncy tricks, their black mistakes, their failings, and mischances. Ye see your state with theirs compared, and shudder at the niffer. But cast a moment's fair regard. What makes the mighty differ? Discount what scant occasion gave, that purity ye pride in, and, what's aft mere than other lave, your better art, O Hayden. Think, when your castigated pulse gies now and then a wallop, what ragings must his veins convulse, that still eternal gallop. We wind and tide fair of your tail, right on ye scud your sea way, but in the teeth o' baith to sail, it makes an unco leeway. See social life and glee sit down, all joyous and unthinking, till, quite transmugrified, their grown debauchery and drinking. Oh, would they stay to calculate the eternal consequences, or your more dreaded hell to state, damnation of expenses? Ye high, exalted, virtuous dames, tied up in godly laces, before ye gie poor frailty names, suppose a change of cases. A dear loved lad, convenience, snug, a treacherous inclination, but let me whisper a your lug. Year ablins, nay temptation. Then gently scan your brother man, still gentler sister woman. Though they may gang a ken and rang, to step aside is human. One point must still be greatly dark, the moving why they do it, and just as lamely can ye mark how far perhaps they rue it. Who made the heart? Tis he alone decidedly can try us. He knows each chord, its various tone, each spring, its various bias. Then at the balance, let's be mute. We never can adjust it. What's done we partly may compute, but no not what's resisted. End of Address to the Unca Gid Recording by Charles MacDonald, Edinburgh, Scotland Email charles.macdonald at virgin.net MacDonald starts M-A-C Robert Burns' 250th Anniversary, Volume 1 To a Mouse, on turning her up in her nest with the plough, November 1785 this is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Charles MacDonald. 
To a Mouse by Robert Burns We sleek it, cooring, timorous beastie. Oh, what a panic's in thy breastie. Thou needna start a war so hasty with bicker and brattle. I would be laith to run and chase thee with murder and battle. I'm truly sorry man's dominion has broken nature's social union and justifies that ill opinion which makes thee startle at me, thy poor earth-born companion and fellow mortal. I doot na whiles, but thou mon thieve. What then, poor beastie, thou mon leave? A daemon icker in a thrave's a small request. I'll get a blessing with a lave and never miss it. Thy wee bit hoosie too in ruin. Its silly was the winds are strewin. And Nathan knew to big a new in of foggage green. And bleak December's winds ensuin, baith snell and keen. Thou saw the fields laid bare and waste, and weary winter coming fast, and cosy here beneath the blast thou thought to dwell, till crash the cruel coulter passed out through thy cell. That wee bit heap o' leaves and stibble has cost thee money a weary nibble. Now thou's turned out for all thy trouble, but hoose or hold, to thole the winter sleety dribble, and Cranroch called. But, Moosey, thou art no thy lane in proving foresight may be vain. The best laid schemes o' mice and men gang aft a glee, and lea is naught but grief and pain for promised joy. Still, thou art blessed compared wi' me, the present only toucheth thee. But, och, I backward cast my e on prospects drear, and forward, though I canna see, I guess and fear. End of To a Mouse Recording by Charles MacDonald, Edinburgh, Scotland Email charles.macdonald at virgin.net MacDonald starts M-A-C Robert Burns, 250th Anniversary, Volume 1 to a louse, on seeing one on a lady's bonnet at church. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Charles MacDonald. To a louse, by Robert Burns. Ha! Where are you going, you crowling fairly? Your impudence protects you sairly. I canna say but ye stunt rarely or gauze and lace, though faith I fear ye'll dine but sparely on sick a place. Ye ugly, creeping, blasted wonner, detested, shunned by saunt and sinner, how dare ye set your fit upon her, say fine a lady? Gae somewhere else and seek your dinner on some poor buddy. Swift and some beggar's hoffet squattle. There ye may creep and sprawl and sprattle, with other kindred jumping cattle and shoals and nations, where horn or bane near door unsettle your thick plantations. Now hud you there, you're out of sight, below the fatral, snug and tight. No, faith ye yet, you'll no be right till ye've got on it, the very topmost towering height o' Mrs. Bonnet. My sooth, right bold ye set your nose out, as plump and grey as any grosset. Oh, for some rank mercurial roset, or fell red smedum, I'd gie ye sick a hearty doze it, would dress your drudum. I wouldn't have been surprised to spy ye on an old wife's flanin toy, or Ablin's some bit duddy boy, on his wily coat. But Mrs. Fine Lunardi, fie, how dare ye do it? Oh, Jenny, dinna toss your heat. And set your beauties all a breed, ye little ken what cursed speed the blast is making. They winks and finger ends a dread are notice taken. Oh, would some power the gifty gears to see ourselves as others see us? It would free money a blunder free us and foolish notion. What airs in dress and gait would lea us and even devotion? 
End of To a Louse. Recording by Charles MacDonald, Edinburgh, Scotland. Email charles.macdonald at virgin.net. MacDonald starts M-A-C. Section 17 of Robert Burns' 250th Anniversary, Volume 1. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. My Love is Like a Red, Red Rose by Robert Burns My love is like a red, red rose that's newly sprung in June. My love is like the melody that's sweetly played in tune. As fair art thou, my bonny lass, so deep in love am I. And I will love thee still, my dear, till a' the seas gang dry. Till a' the seas gang dry, my dear, and the rocks melt with the sun. And I will love thee still, my dear, while the sands o' life shall run. And fare thee weel, my only love, and fare thee weel a while. And I will come again, my love, though it were ten thousand mile. End of My Love is Like a Red, Red Rose Section 19 of Robert Burns' 250th Anniversary, Volume 1. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. John Barleycorn, A Ballad, by Robert Burns. There were three kings into the east, three kings both great and high, and they had sworn a solemn oath. John Barleycorn should die. They took a plough and ploughed him down, put clods upon his head, and they had sworn a solemn oath, John Barleycorn was dead. But the cheerful spring came kindly on, and showers began to fall. John Barleycorn got up again, and sore surprised them all. The sultry suns of summer came, and he grew thick and strong. His head was armed with pointed spears, that no one should him wrong. The sober autumn entered mild, when he grew wan and pale. His beating joints and drooping head showed he began to fail. His color sickened more and more, he faded into age, and then his enemies began to show their deadly rage. They've taken a weapon, long and sharp, and cut him by the knee, then tied him fast upon a cart, like a rogue for forgery. They laid him down upon his back, and cudgelled him full sore. They hung him up before the storm, and turned him o'er and o'er. They filled up a darksome pit, with water to the brim. They heaved in John Barleycorn, and let him sink or swim. They laid him out upon the floor, to work him further woe, and still as signs of life appeared, they tossed him to and fro. They wasted o'er a scorching flame, the marrow of his bones. But a miller used him worst of all, he crushed him tween the stones. And they had taken his very part's blood, and drank it round and round, and still the more and more they drank, their joy did more abound. John Bardicorn was a hero bold, of noble enterprise, for if you do but taste his blood, twill make your courage rise. Twill make a man forget his woe, twill heighten all his joy, twill make the widow's heart to sing, though the tear were in her eye. Then let us toast John Bardicorn, each man a glass in hand, and may his great posterity ne'er fail in old Scotland. End of John Barleycorn, a ballad. Recorded by David Lawrence, January the 10th, 2009, in Brampton, Ontario. Section 22 of Robert Burns, 250th Anniversary, Volume 1. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Paradise Camouflage. Andy from Inverarnon, Scotland. My Hearts in the Highlands by Robert Burns. My heart's in the highlands, my heart is not here. My heart's in the highlands, a chasing the deer, a chasing the wild deer and following the roe. 
My heart's in the highlands, wherever I go. Farewell to the highlands, farewell to the north, the birthplace of valour, the country of worth. Wherever I wander, wherever I rove, the hills of the highlands forever I love. Farewell to the mountains, high covered with snow. Farewell to the straths and green valleys below. Farewell to the forests and wild hanging woods. Farewell to the torrents and loud pouring floods. My heart's in the highlands, my heart is not here. My heart's in the highlands, a chase in the deer. A chase in the wild deer and following the roe. My heart's in the highlands, wherever I go. End of My Heart's in the Highlands. Recording by Andy, Minvarn in Scotland. M-E-L-Y-S dot W-S. Section 23 of Robert Burns' 250th Anniversary, Volume 1. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded and sung by Carol Stripling. Flow Gently, Sweet Afton by Robert Burns. <laughs> Stop, 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 stop,
End of song, Flow Gently, Sweet Afton, recorded by Carol Stripling.